Interstate beltways are a common thing in many sprawling American cities. The Atlanta perimeter, the Baltimore beltway, the DC Capitol beltway, the Charlotte outer loop, the Cincinnati beltway, among others. But traveling up I-95 through Richmond, Virginia, one can't help but notice this strange configuration of semi and partial loops that traverse the former capital of the South. You may have seen and even taken I-295 when headed northbound around the city. You've probably seen and never taken Virginia 895, one of the most underused toll roads in America. But there is no continuous loop around Richmond like many other cities. Why is that? What happened in Richmond to where we ended up with this strange combination of roadways? On this video, we're about to find out why Richmond, Virginia does not have a full beltway. Go ahead and hit that like button because this is going to be a good one. And also subscribe because there are many more topics coming in the future. So before we delve into the history of how it got this way, let's talk about the current roadway network in Richmond. I-95 is obviously the main north-south artery and most important roadway in the region. Almost bisecting Richmond right down the middle, I-95 is the road that connects Richmond to the heavily populated Boswash Megalopolis to the north and Richmond is the last major city on I-95 before it reaches Florida. There even used to be a sign in Petersburg at the split with I-85 that listed Miami, Florida and Atlanta, Georgia as control cities to help people from the Northeast figure out how to reach their ultimate destinations through all that strange wilderness in between. I-64 is the region's east-west highway. It stays north of the James River and has an interchange with I-95 near downtown, joining it in a short concurrency before splitting and continuing west outside the city. To the east, I-64 runs towards the Hampton Roads area, which is anchored by Norfolk. To the west, I-64 becomes quite the scenic route, passing through Charlottesville, the Blue Ridge Mountains, and ultimately heading into West Virginia. All good so far. The standard major north-south highway crossing and east-west highway near the center of the city. I-85, another major divisible by five interstate highway, splits from I-95 in Petersburg to go on its own journey through major southern metros such as Raleigh-Durham, Charlotte, and Atlanta. I-95 north of this junction is now carrying long-distance traffic from both the Atlanta and Carolinas metros along with Florida traffic. But here is where things get interesting. First, we have the other interstate highway in the region, I-295. I-295 splits from I-95 south of Petersburg, where it is signed as a route for getting to the Richmond Airport and to Washington, D.C. It loops back to I-95 north of the city and continues west to meet its end at I-64 in the short pump area. This northern arc of I-295 can be used as a bypass for I-64 travelers wishing to avoid the city. One thing of note about I-295 is that it does not connect to I-85. Recall that I-85 floods I-95 with traffic from the Carolinas and Georgia, but at the same time, I-295 is supposed to serve as a bypass of Richmond. This delivers I-85's long-distance trucks and passenger vehicles onto I-95 and right into downtown Richmond. The next opportunity for I-85 traffic to reach I-295 and bypass Richmond will be at Virginia 895, the Pocahontas Parkway. However, this route is both expensive and out of the way for I-85 traffic wanting to pass through Richmond. So pretty much everyone just stays on I-95 through downtown Richmond. Another complication is that despite signage on I-95 suggesting that drivers use I-295 to get to Washington, D.C., oftentimes in the age of GPS, the program will tell drivers to use I-95 if it is indeed the faster route, even further reducing the impact of I-295 on traffic. In my personal experience, there's typically congestion just north of the I-295, I-95 interchange approaching Ashland with the current freeway network. People of Richmond as well as long distance travelers know this one quite well. So that's where things stand today. Now let's explore how we got here. I-295, the current roadway that forms a partial loop around Richmond was actually conceived in 1956 as a part of Richmond's original highway plan. It was to have this loop as seen in the photo with Virginia 288 forming the southwestern portion of that loop. The primary differences you will notice compared to today is that both connections between I-295 and Virginia 288 were essentially broken. The western end of Virginia 288 is slightly further to the west of where I-295 ends at I-64. And instead of meeting Virginia 288 where it ends at I-95, I-295 extends much further to the south, past Petersburg to a southern terminus at Interstate 95. So why did this happen? 
The first issue to arise with the plan was in 1968. The section of I-295 up until Virginia 5 was built as envisioned. However, the section between this area and I-95, including plans for a 150-foot bridge over the James River, was deemed to have unacceptable impact on Civil War historical monuments and territory in the area. So that sky-high bridge that you see today on Virginia 895 was supposed to be somewhere around here. In 1978, it was decided to instead build I-295 where you see today, all the way south of Petersburg. On the other end of the Beltway at I-64 and I-295, a court injunction in 1971 halted construction due to potential disruption to the Tuckahoe Plantation property. A lack of funding then stalled out the project throughout the 70s, and studies for an alternate route were canceled. The project was revived in the 1980s and studies began on how to complete the loop. However, by this point, there had been extensive development along the proposed route. Virginia is a strange state when it comes to its jurisdictions with this bizarre independent city system, but it also had a bizarre roadway jurisdiction law on the books known as the Bird Act. The Bird Act was passed in 1932 by the Virginia General Assembly and it was designed to take pressure off cash-strapped counties and allow the state to take over responsibility for county roads. This created the Virginia Secondary Road System, which you can see today with these types of shields. Rural domination was the name of the game in Virginia, so while counties were allowed to participate in this program, independent cities were excluded. So while Chesterfield County opted into the system, Henrico did not. As such, the right-of-way for the planned section through Chesterfield County was allowed to develop while the project was tied up in courts with funding issues. Henrico County, with direct control over its roads, was able to restrict development on its section and preserve the right-of-way for the highway. As we can see here today, a suburban utopia has found its home at the end of I-295's path. With all this development now in place, it became politically impossible to construct the route as originally envisioned, and in 1988, Virginia officials canceled the planned route through this area. The portion of the route from I-95 to Virginia 76 was completed as originally designed in 1989, including a new bridge over the James River. It is now known as the World War II Veterans Memorial Highway. In place of the canceled original route, Virginia 288 was shifted westward to its current alignment to meet I-64 west of the interchange with I-295. In Henrico County, a surface road known as the John Rolfe Parkway was built in place of the Virginia 288 right-of-way. John Rolfe Parkway serves as a major arterial route for the large suburban developments in that area. Today, a short stub and cleared right-of-way for ramps to access I-64 can be seen on Google satellite imagery at the interchange with I-295. In place of the direct connection between I-295 and Virginia 288, Virginia officials added a lane on both the east and westbound I-64, so the traffic intending to continue between I-295 and Virginia 288 can do so without weaving into I-64's through traffic. Recognizing that the new routing of I-295 was inaccessible by I-85 traffic, Virginia officials began proposing potential locations for a connector between Interstate 95 and Interstate 295 to complete the final link in the now discontinuous beltway. Proposals included various crossings of the James River, near Dutch Gap, and at the current Virginia 895 location. Ultimately, the ideas of a crossing near Dutch Gap were eliminated due to environmental and development concerns in that area. Virginia 10, though a major arterial rather than a freeway, is still promoted on I-95 as a way to get I-85 traffic to Interstate 295. However, the big project was built to the north, Virginia 895. The current location of Virginia 895 was actually envisioned originally as a major arterial route known as the Laburnum Avenue Extension. Later, plans call for this to be an interstate highway instead to connect to the existing Chippenham Parkway and provide an interstate connection between I-95 and 295, as well as traffic from I-85. In 1995, the Virginia General Assembly passed the Public-Private Transportation Act to allow private companies to provide financing and bid for designing and construction of transportation infrastructure. This allowed 895 to be constructed more quickly rather than waiting for public funds to become available. It was built as a fully interstate quality four-lane toll road with space for six lanes if traffic counts later warranted additional capacity. A signature feature, the most expensive part being the high-level bridge over the James River which provides 145 feet of clearance for river traffic and 3,500 feet of high-level ramps connecting it to Interstate 95 at a whopping cost of $111 million. One notable issue with Virginia 895 is that it does not provide a connection from southbound I-95 to eastbound Virginia 895. This ramp was likely omitted due to the high cost of the high-level ramps connecting to the roadway. 
on Google satellite imagery, it appears that land has been cleared for this potential ramp, though there are no current plans for its construction. This appears to make Virginia 895 more of a route for use by Henrico County residents rather than those in the city of Richmond. I guess they won't be needing to add those extra lanes anytime soon. While it was planned to be added to the interstate highway system as Interstate 895, Virginia did use 9.28 million of federal funds in its preliminary engineering, and thus the Federal Highway Administration rejected this application for the I-895 designation. Though not a part of the Beltway plans, of note is Virginia 150, the Chippenham Parkway, which forms a partial southwestern loop around the city and is a freeway up until Forest Hill Avenue. And so with all of that, what we have here today are the remnants of the Richmond Beltway. My personal experience with the Beltway as someone usually entering the Richmond area coming off I-85 from Charlotte was that I didn't use it. In Petersburg, once you merge into I-95, it just made no logical sense to use VA-10 and definitely no sense to pay the toll on VA-895 to reach I-295 for the bypass. I'm sure that unless there's some crazy traffic pile up on I-95 in Richmond, just about all of I-85 traffic will continue on I-95 through the city. Plus, the views of downtown Richmond are much more pleasant than the extra hike to see the trees on I-295. Now, if you're entering Richmond from I-95 south of the city, then I can see where I-295 could make sense. You get a less travel route and bypass all the commotion going on in Richmond. However, many times that I come to Richmond via I-95, the GPS still recommends using Interstate 95 to get through the city over I-295. Where I-295 does seem to make the most sense, at least on the map, is as an I-64 bypass around the city. I-64 traffic in both directions can use I-295 to bypass downtown Richmond. I personally haven't traveled through Richmond via I-64 as a through traffic driver yet, so I'm not sure if GPS apps will typically recommend I-295 over I-64 to get through the city. Overall, considering everything that occurred, it appears that Virginia officials did what they could in the wake of not being able to build the complete beltway, barring that miscalculation of Virginia 895 and its lower than anticipated use, along with the loss of interstate designation. But I'd like to hear what you guys experience with these various parts of the Richmond Beltway, especially if you live in the Richmond area. Which parts of the Beltway do you find to be useful as a resident of the area? People passing through Richmond via I-95 or I-64, do you use I-295 to bypass the city, or do you just stay on the mainline interstates? Does anyone actually use Virginia 895, aka the Pocahontas Parkway? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you on the next trip coming soon to a town near you.